What up everybody, I got one for y'all today, talking about the big boss, the kingpin of kingpins, James St. Patrick, aka Ghost, and the obvious question, why he had no other choice but to fake his death, because we know he's still alive and gonna return one day, because Ghost never dies, so I wanna start off this video by talking about one particular character in particular and that is Stephen Ott from the Democratic Party. Stephen Ott was never introduced until Ghost's supposed death. However, he was officially still alive but we had already seen him get shot because uh, he was introduced in the Who Got Who Shot Ghost or Who Killed Ghost series, the last final five episodes of Power, and he has a famous quote that he to- that he said in Ghost 109. He was talking to Cooper Sacks, and he told Cooper Sacks that the first rule of American politics: it's not the truth, but how the truth looks. So. But the truth is, Ghost is still alive. How the truth looks, James St. Patrick was murdered at his club in downtown New York. So, that gets me into this video. And Stephen Ott makes his first appearance visiting Jacob Warner. Um, And he tells Jacob Warner, the head of the DEA or feds, whatever uh, that office is, He called, he said, in James St. Patrick is now property of the Democratic Party. So keep that in mind. He is basically protected by the Democratic Party, untouchable, or or like they said in episode 610 so many times, he is now unstoppable because he is property of the Democratic Party. And we know later in that same episode, Jacob Warner... This was after the supposed death of Ghost. Jacob Warner was fired for pursuing Ghost. Uh, they believe it was the very next day after the whole thing went down. Ott enters into the office of Jacob Warner and he tells him, I told you to leave James St. Patrick alone. And Jacob Warner was really smug and thought he thought he was above uh, what J, uh, uh, Stephen Ott was telling him. And Stephen Ott said, that phone call is going to happen. You might as well start packing your stuff. And yeah, it happened. Jacob Warner was fired for pursuing ghosts. Notice they weren't talking about ghosts being dead or anything like that. It was The whole thing was you shouldn't have pursued James St. Patrick or whatever. I think he, you know, if I said ghost, he said James St. Patrick, whatever. But he shouldn't have fired. He shouldn't have had pursued James St. Patrick. So why were he? Why was he pursuing ghosts? If we remember that the feds were going after ghosts for the murder of Terry Silver, in addition to building a bigger RICO case. But what they had on him through a lot of. <laughs> A lot of, I mean, even though he was the one behind it, they had a lot of, they had a fake story from Andre Coleman. They had Andre Coleman also, Cooper Sacks had Coleman plant the um, phone in Ghost Hotel Room. So they had a lot going on and they were building a bigger Rico case. And Blanco Rodriguez was the, um, was the main comp, cop behind this. An invest- the investigation of Ghost, and she was arriving at the club just moments after Ghost was shot with an arrest warrant. So, Ghost had no choice but to fake his death in order to avoid going to prison for the murder of Ser- of Terry Silver. And he did this with the help of the Democratic Party, specifically Stephen Ott as the one behind the scenes pulling the strings. So it gets me to Ghost 101, the first episode of the Ghost series. And this is when Tasha is on trial for the murder of James St. Patrick. And he comes into... um, 
the office of, I believe it was Cooper Sachs, and Stephen Alt says, it is important to the Democratic Party that certain details about James' life does not come out in court. So we know the whole storyline what in season one was trying to put all the blame on Tasha and make Ghost look like he was an innocent victim of um, her, her being the queen pin and that make Ghost look innocent. Now, so I want to take a minute to look at this from a real live perspective, how bad this would actually had made the Democratic Party if uh, this information would have came out in court about exactly who Ghost James St. Patrick was. So now just imagine a real kingpin from America, um, say Frank Lucas, the guy from the story American Gangster, or like Big Meech from uh, the BMF uh, show and series, or any other major drug kingpin being put in a position to be the lieutenant governor. To be the lieutenant governor of one of the biggest states. I don't have I'm, I don't have a history book in front of me or whatever, but one of the biggest states in the entire United States. So and it's the most famous state in the entire world, New York, New York City. He's about to be put in position to be the lieutenant governor of New York, right as the feds are closing in on their investigation. And we remember talking about Tasha was nervous about what, um, you know, James joining politics because what if all this information comes out about <clears throat> ghost and he tells her well i've already passed my background check so they say supposedly did a background check on him and he passed everything but they didn't realize that the feds were literally closing in on a rico investigation um so james did get bad press after his death but if he would have arrested and eventually charged in a RICO case, it would have been much worse because all the press was that he did get was nothing but rumors, nothing that could actually be proven. So get me back to Terry Silver. Terry Silver was going to test about, testify about Mike Sandoval, the dirty prosecutor who was working for Filippo Lobo, Felipe Lobos who got murdered at the MCC. Um, Terry Silver was the one who told James that Mike was being held in the MCC. Also Angela Valdez was in on this because she needed she needed Sandoval to get taken out so to avoid things coming out about her. So she is the one who actually told Terry Silver that Mike was being held at the MCC. And Terry Silver knew that Tariq was the one who actually killed Ray Ray because Tasha had to admit it to Terry to keep him from snitching on Ghost because he was sure that it was Ghost who killed Ray Ray and he was about to go to the cops. So Tasha had no other choice but to tell Terry that it was actually Tariq so he knew a, a lot of information so Ghost took him out for all that information information that he actually know so that gets me to Tariq while I'm talking about Ray Ray's situation that gets me to Tariq and I want to talk about James provoking Tariq by telling Tariq that he is going to turn him in for Ray Ray and also that he might t turn Tasha, Tariq's mom, in for Lakeisha. This, like we find out, James, Ghost, whatever, forced Tariq's hand just like Ghost's hand was formed, forced with Breeze, except Ghost saw it was coming. Especially when the whole thing was played out. So let me get into how Ghost saw everything was coming. Alright, that gets me into Kanan and his part in all of this. When Kanan took Tariq to Breeze's old apartment and he was telling him the story about Breeze. He told Tariq he 
Nev that Breeze ne didn't have time to get scared because he never saw it coming. So, that's when Tariq was about to text Tasha because if you remember, Tasha was actually supposed to be the one to kill Ghost. But when, when Tariq is about to text Tasha, the Kanan's ghost appears to Tariq and smacks the phone out of Tariq's hand. And one of the things he tells Tariq is that he'll never see it coming from you. So like I said, but Ghost did see it already coming because Kanan had a conversation with Ghost about Tariq soon before Kanan died. And he told Ghost that Tariq was born gangster and he's colder than you were at that age. Ghost knew for real that Tariq was coming for him when he told Tariq he needed to turn himself in and before Tariq said he would turn himself in he said tell me about Breeze and that's when Ghost knew for real that Tariq was definitely coming for him you can see the facial expression on Ghost's face when when he was asked that question and we remember going back even further when Ghost put the gun to Tariq's head for letting Tommy in. When he thought he let Tommy in to kill him. He said, don't you ever think you're smarter than me. And I want to look at this. That Ghost could have never turned in Tariq for the murder of Ray Ray. Because the fact that him and Tommy were actually accomplices in getting rid of the body. So what is Tariq actually going to, if Tariq was forced to turn himself in when he's asked the question about what happened to the body of Raymond Jones, at that point what could he tell him? Because they know he didn't get rid of the body by himself and he would have been asked that question and that's when they would have found out he had accomplice and Ghost and Tommy could have possibly been found out for being the accomplices. So there's no way that Tariq could have actually ever turned himself in for Ray Ray in the first place. That was just all regards to Ghost provoking, <coughs> provoking Tariq to come and basically forcing Tariq's hand to come and shoot him just the same way that Ghost Hand was forced with Breeze. And we remember he said that Breeze got in the way of his future so obviously that's what Ghost was doing for Tariq getting in the way of his future. That's why when Tariq shot Ghost he said you're getting in the way of my future just like Breeze got in the way of yours. So that gets me to the actual scene of the shooting when Ghost is waiting at Truth after putting the lights out. He waited at the balcony. Instead of leaving to go to his car or vehicle to leave, he simply waited at the balcony. I believe he was waiting at the balcony. So when Tariq came in there to shoot him, that he would get the one shot to the chest and before there could be a second kill shot to the head that he um, falls off of the balcony and it could also be possible that the ghost had on a bulletproof vest so if we go back to other people in the power universe getting shot in a similar manner we can remember that Greg Knox survived the same type of shooting with a vest on when, when Tommy and Lobo's crew were breaking Lobo's out from the feds. So Greg Knox survived a similar shooting and he also had a, on a bulletproof vest and either though he had a bulletproof vest on we still saw him lose consciousness but several hours later he was fine and didn't even feel like he needed go to go to the doctor another similar situation was detective howard getting getting shot by kanan his son a very similar situation to Tariq and ghost but he was able to survive and he didn't even have 
on a vest or anything. And even if Ghost didn't have on a vest, which I think he obviously did at, at least have on a vest, um, he's definitely in at least better shape than Malcolm Howard is, so he could definitely take a shot better than Howard would be able to. And if you remember... The final shows were done from different perspectives. 611 through 615 were all were each done through different characters' perspectives. So if we go back to 610, the final actual episode of Power before the five episodes um, Who Shot Ghost. I mean, those are actual episodes too, but the actual episode we saw things from Ghost, perspe ghost perspective. The perspective in... Episode 610 shows absolutely no conversation between the shooter, who we now know as Tariq, and Ghost. Only Ghost asking, what are you doing here? And then he gets shot. However, in 615, Ghost and Tariq have an entire conversation before Tariq actually pulls the trigger on Ghost. So there is two clear perspective differences there and there's I got two, at least two more point of views from those episodes that had completely different perspectives. So if you remember when Tommy rushes in and breaks into Tasha's apartment to kill her for when once he finds out that she was actually the one who killed Lakeisha that we see that when we see that particular scene from Tommy's perspective and we see it from Tasha's perspective and both of those scenes are completely different it's one she at one I think she turns his I think Tommy's perspective she completely turns his turns her back to him and on from her perspective she gets on her knees and begs for his begs for her life so two completely per different perspectives there and we have the Tommy and Tariq conversation when they meet up to talk about Dre is on the way to truth to kill Ghost. Those are two per different perspectives also because from Tommy's perspective, Tommy says all the shady things that Ghost did to me and I did to you and you did to Ghost, all that can be forgiven. I don't know if he said that exactly, but it was he basically put the blame on everybody, saying everybody was at blame, but everything can be forgiven and they can be a family again. But when we saw the conversation from Tariq's perspective, Tommy simply says all that shady stuff you've done can be forgiven. So all the weight was for all the shady things that has happened was not on Ghost, was not on Tommy, but all of it was on Tariq when we saw the episode from Tariq's actual perspective. And when we see Ghost get shot, the, the amount of blood shown when Tariq is looking at Ghost and when Tommy is looking at Ghost is completely different. There's a whole pile of blood on the ground when Ghost looks when Tariq looks down at Ghost after shooting him, but when Tommy's there, there was never any blood except for a little bit on Ghost's shirt. And additionally, that the um, we find out from episode 612, somebody was watching the news. I, I don't know who 612 was about, but I do have the um, actual show referenced here it said that the authorities were on the spot immediately so he didn't have any time that he was just there because they knew that Blanca Braca Rodriguez was on her way into the club with an arrest warrant to arrest Ghost so they had no other choice but to make sure that the body was out of there immediately and if you look close enough, you will see that there was an ambulance parked in the garage next to Ghost Truck when Tasha looked in from the rearview mirrors. It was the same, same ambulance that we see that picked Ghost up already. They had already had Ghost's body and um, everything leaving the club. By the time Tariq gets, um, changes his clothes and puts his backpack in the 
in the trash can or whatever he did out back by the time he got to the front of the scene that same ambulance had already had ghost in the ambulance in a way so there was just a matter of matter of minutes few minutes i would say seconds but a few just with a matter of minutes ghost was out of the club so they were there immediately and ghost was taken away now i want to get in before i get any further to this into this particular video i want to get into a possible backup plan and it might have been perhaps the original plan that ghost had I don't know if Tariq was initially the plan. He could have had two plans because we saw he provoked, like everything I said, he was provoking, push, forcing Tariq's hand. But he definitely had a backup plan if Tariq didn't come through or Tasha. And that was Andre Coleman because we know Andre Coleman was on the run for... Um, I think they had he they had him in custody for the arrest of a uh, ghost framed him for killing Jason Minchin. So he was on the run and he was about to flee with his family. But he goes to Councilman Tate, who also had the most to gain from Ghost faking his death because at that point he could get in as the um he could become the governor. I and mean, even though he know he lost the election, he did get, have the most to gain. And he, you know, he's controlled by, we definitely know he's controlled by the Democratic Party, especially by, by what we saw in um, Season 1 of Ghost when he, when they basically had a whole script he went there to read um, that he had to say when questioned by um, Davis McLean and Cooper Sacks uh, in front of the judge. So we know he's controlled by the Democratic Party. But he sent Andre Coleman to kill Ghost at the same time, and he gave he gave Dre a hundred k to do it. So I'm trying to figure out: Did Tate actually have this kind of money laying around, or was that the Democratic Party coming in with this assist with the hundred k? Because we do know he had the two hitters coming in initially. To kill Ghost from out from I think it was either Baltimore, D.C. Cedric the Entertainer. I don't know what his real name was and his son, <coughs> but <clears throat> I don't know if he's gonna pay them a hundred k. I don't think Councilman Tate had the kind of money, uh, even though he was scheming from the Queen's Childhood uh, Project. But I don't think he had a hundred k laying around. Either though he might have, but I think that was the backup plan and that was the Democratic Party. I think. That was their plan also was to set Andre Coleman up for the murder because we know also that Councilman Tate set Andre Coleman up with a fake ID so he could get out of town. So maybe they didn't plan on just Dre going down. They had him with a fake ID, 100K to get out of town. But he was definitely caught on his way out. But he had the fake ID. He had the plates and everything to get out of town. Now I wanted to go look at another person who faked his debt in power. Ghost partner Tommy Egan. In Ghost episode 10, the season 1 finale. Tommy Egan fakes his death. And we know he also got away with clean papers and everything. Changed name. Because he got pulled over, his or I think his car was stopped by. I don't. It wasn't stopped, but Diamond was sitting in his car, and a cop, and a cop stopped him to question him. And when he came out, he gave him all the information, and everything on Tommy was clean. So he had clean papers, clean ID, and all that. Now sticking with Tommy for this particular video, in Ghost episode 110. He tells Tommy, Tommy tells Tariq, I gave Ghost my word I want to kill you. This is when Tariq is sitting on um, Tommy's car. He says, I gave Ghost my word I want to kill you, but if you don't get your skinning off my car. So we never saw once, once, once. Ghost got shot. We never we saw Tommy arrive and we saw Ghost stop him from shooting Tariq. 
but at the same time we never saw um ghost say anything to tommy or tommy giving ghost his word about killing Tariq. so i think this was a conversation that they had later on that Tommy um, and Ghost had after Ghost was shot by Tariq when Ghost got out of town. I think um, with especially with everything going on, Tommy was probably on his way there to kill Tasha. He probably told Ghost, probably still in contact with Ghost, told Ghost that he was going to go there to do that and he might have to kill Tariq if he gets in the way and Tariq and Ghost told him don't do it when Tariq is around and Tommy gave him his word because we definitely didn't see that conversation in power by Tommy giving Ghost his word that he wouldn't kill Tariq and that gets me to all throughout the power seasons most of the people especially the main characters when they died we were uh we saw a body especially main characters kanan and angela valdez we saw both their bodies unfortunately it was pretty nasty to see i turned my head i don't i didn't want to see that and stuff but they show both of their bodies too so there's no question if angela valdez or kanan is dead we both we know both them dead because we saw their bodies we even saw them dig up angela so there's no question there but for ghost we never saw a body we never saw the um ghost body the funeral was closed casket they didn't even sh pretend to even like have Tariq standing over the um casket like saying anything at the time like standing over the casket and or nothing like that we didn't it was a closed casket funeral we never see Tariq or Tasha Tommy anybody at the morgue to identify ghost body like we saw so many times with like I say Kanan we saw ghost and Tommy there with Angela Valdez we saw um, her body at the morgue we never saw this with ghost at Ghost funer Funeral, there was a song that was playing that said, I may never come home. I may never come home. So, I think Ghost is in the wind and he don't plan on ever coming home. In Ghost Episode 110, Tariq tells, I started off this, this video saying this. In Ghost Episode 110, Tariq tells Monet that ghosts never die. So that's definitely a big clue. And I'm going to take this break to say in, in this particular video to say this. That we all know that this is fiction. So uh, it's obvious that the writers left these holes so that at any point they could always bring ghosts back to to power book two or power book four force at any time that's why they never show the body particularly with everything i mean yeah he said ghosts never die and all the other clues that suggests ghost is still alive but, but mainly never showing the body never um identifying having anybody identify his body that always will leave the door open to having ghosts come back at any time and either though courtney kemp has said i uh, so i don't know i don't pay attention i don't i don't follow that but i've heard that she said ghosts won't return or uh, or ghosts didn't fake his death but in, in an interview but i mean what is she supposed to say really is she supposed to say yeah ghost is still alive and we're gonna bring him back season four of of book two ghost no she's not going to say that she only her only option when questioned about ghost is to say that he is dead that gets me into a couple fan theories that i wanted to look uh, uh talk about they let that was left in my comments that i found interesting and the first is that we do know that Tariq hid the murder weapon at truth and that Ghost could have found the murder weapon and changed the bullets in the gun to blanks. Or I heard that the um, changed the weapon completely. 
But I think Tariq would have been smart enough to know that it was a different gun in there. So most likely, he changed the uh, um, changed the bullets to blanks. Because we see right before he was right before Ghost closed down Truth, before, moments to getting shot, he um, was standing right. In, he, he was having a conversation with Ramona. And she was talking about, we'll meet up. And he said, yeah, I just have a few things to do. And he was standing in the exact same spot that Tariq hid the gun. So he could have very well at that point either put a different gun in the spot. Or he could have replaced the bullets in that gun with blanks. Gets me to my next um, fan comment. It said, do you remember when the lawyer brought the letter to Tariq to read and he asked him, did my father do all this before he died? The lawyer had to take a deep breath before answering yes. And I think Ghost gave him that letter after he heard Ghost was in, he heard Tariq was in jail. Another one is, if you notice... He doesn't have a date on the tombstone, only the day he died, just the day he was born. That gets me into where is Ghosts now and when will he return? So, where is he now? I believe he changed his name, obviously. Ob like, Tasha is going by a different name. Uh, Yaz now has to go by a different name. Tommy sure uh, has a different name on, on his ID, probably. Uh, I think Ghost is going by, I mean, obviously he's changed his name. Probably going by something like Omari Hardwick or something like that. I think he's not, he is um, with Ramona Garrity, possibly in Miami, where we know he has um, been before with Angela, where he wanted to possibly move. He talked about moving to Miami with Angela starting fresh and in addition there is a scene in Force where Tommy Egan is talking to his brother JP and they're talking about how Ghost and Tommy split the split the money 50-50 and got out of town that Tommy headed to Chicago and he said what about your partner and Tommy said he headed south and I think he is probably in Miami running a club, possibly with the help of Simon Stern, who might also be in on this also. And he possibly might even have another family started down there in Miami with Ramona. If you go back all the way back to Power Season 2, Episode 6, Tasha had Tasha and her mom Estelle Green was having a conversation and Estelle says you know what it is marriage another kid he will forget all about you so there's a possibility that ghost is in Miami with another and he's actually started another family and this could be the whole that is used to bring him back into the series because right now he's out of the game with everything he ever wanted living in miami running a club um because ghost never wanted to be a politician i believe ghost used politics to get out of the game because he would have never been able to get out clean otherwise it was just too much blood on his hands. The feds, there was Cooper Sacks, different feds, uh, Blanca Rod Ramirez, whatever her name is. Blanca had um, had it out to bust ghosts one way or another. He, and he could have never gotten out. He had too many enemies as far as too much blood on his hands to never get out the game clean otherwise. There's a conversation in power he had with Andre Coleman. He told Andre Coleman, do you want to be looking over your shoulder your whole life? And on, uh, Andre Coleman's response was, so, so now all of a sudden you're not looking over your shoulder anymore? And we know Ghost was still looking over his shoulder because he's, even at that point he had the card that, he, um, that uh, Milan had put in his desk so ghost was still looking over his shoulder 
and the only way he was going to be able to get out the game clean and not be looking over his shoulder it was going to have to be him faking his death and him having some strong political backing and help in doing so so what could bring ghost back to the show because i mean i don't see ghost getting back into the show i've said before powers um based on a true story written about my life and ghost and tommy egan are just two different uh basically put them together you have me and i'm out the game i'm legit now i don't ever plan on getting back in the game so ghost don't ever plan tommy yeah he's he's still he can't get out the game but ghost he ain't ever planning on getting back in the game so what could force ghost hand to bring him back in the game and i think the only thing at this point that could bring him back in the game is possibly yaz being in danger um Lobo's people possibly could come f back for payback and um, we do know that they um, Lobo's had threatened to k take out uh, somebody's entire bloodline for messing with him so <coughs> Lobo's ain't to be played with and we know that his he um, goes further than him so that's just one character milan uh, ghost took have made a lot of enemies especially jake jason mentioned it could be it, the serbs could find out that ghost was the one behind that and uh jason mentioned their boss and not andre coleman and that could be another people who come for ghost families so there could be multiple reasons why go uh multiple people who could come and and like i said ghost might be in miami with another family and starting another family and the one of his enemies people could possibly find out he's still alive and make threats even on yaz and Tariq and ghost new family so in concluding I want to say why would Ghost leave his family behind? So who did he leave behind that would be considered family? Tasha, his ex-wife, or I don't think they had a divorce yet, but Tasha, no, he don't care nothing about Tasha. That That's laughable about him thinking about Tasha. I think, matter of fact, he wanted her possibly to get set up for his, for his murder instead of... Um, to, to, I think he wanted her to take the fall for him, his murder also because they had a, a bad blood between them at that point um, Tariq yeah, he, we know Ghost still loves Tariq but at this point he can no longer once once he, um, Tariq let Tommy in and he felt like Tariq let Tommy in to kill him he can no longer trust Tariq especially after Tariq pulled the trigger on him and especially Yaz that could be the one person that he he wouldn't want to leave behind but he did um set up both Yaz and Tariq to be taken care of with plenty of inheritance money um he left Tommy Egan behind but he had to leave Tommy Egan behind. Even if Tommy Egan knows where it's still debatable. If he knows that I did bring him up. Talk about I promise Ghost not to kill you. But it's not guaranteed that Tommy Egan knows. But even if he did know. He had to get rid of, get away from Tommy Egan. Otherwise he would have never been out of, able to get out of the game. At one point in power Kanan and, Kanan and Ghost were having... Um, a conversation about Tommy and Kanan said Tommy always needed someone to take care of him and that was your job and we know Ghost didn't no longer want to take care of Tommy um, Kate Egan got a large inheritance from from Ghost and she says I can't wait to tell Tommy he'll probably say it's a hoax so that's another possible hint right there that J Ghost is still alive. And all these people who go got the inheritance, Yaz and Tariq especially, if Ghost would not have faked his death and he would have tried to 
see what he just plays cards out and possibly go down for the murder of Terry Silver, possibly uh, get a RICO charge against him. They would have seized all his assets because we saw in Ghost in Power Season Four when he was uh, in jail for the murder of Greg Knox that they they uh, froze all his assets. But if they would have got a RICO charge against him, they would have simply um, seized all his assets, and his children would have been left with nothing. So this was the only way he can for sure guaranteed that um, his children get the inheritance. And like I started off, one of the things I started off this video saying was there's certain things that the democratic party does not want to be said about james in court if those things would have been sent on court they put they that could also be um a reason for his assets to get um seized so how does the go how must conclude with this how if ghost is ever kept uh if ghost is ever caught and found out that he faked his death and he were to how do the democratic party ensure that he doesn't talk about them um and tell and basically say that he was that the, he got he got away with the help of the democratic party and that's because they threaten everything everything ghost has he already knows how powerful they are that he they, they could get him killed in prison. But they would have to threaten more than... That more than just his life. I believe they would threaten um, everything associated with him. Meaning Yaz, Tariq, probably Kate Egan, his uncle Gabe. Um, they threaten everything. And that's like we saw Pablo Escobar do. If you ever saw Blow... Um, one of the things Pablo Escobar would do to control people and make sure people don't snitch on him or betray him is that he would threat he would get their information and find out everything about them and he would threaten their entire families. So I know this is what why even though Yaz and Tasha are in witness protection, the Democratic Party obviously could find them at any point. So that's how they keep Ghost silent if he is ever found out about faking his death. And before I go, one final thing. I want you to keep your eyes on moving forward into Season 3 of Power Book 2. Ghost is the character Mahoney. He was mentioned briefly by Mecca um, in the final couple episodes. You remember that... Kane and Brayden robbed a couple of Mahoney's spots. This was somebody else new to town and trying to move in on the same turf as Mecca. So could this Mahoney who is new to town, could this be Ghost back in town, back in New York, but he's going under the name Mahoney. So keep I've heard this theory out running out there, so I wanted to mention it before I go. So keep an eye looking out for season three until we meet the character Mahoney and find out for sure that it's not Ghost. There's a possibility that this new character who we still haven't seen yet, we've only heard about, he's coming into, he's new to town supposedly, making big moves in the game. This could be Ghost coming into town and going under the name Mahoney. I don't know, like I said, I don't, I don't think he would want to get back in the game, but you never know what his circumstances and situation is. So just keep an eye out on that character, Mahoney, moving forward. And there you have it. Why Ghost had to fake his death. How he got away. And when will he return to the Power Universe? Leave your thoughts in the comments.